In 2025, Ontario marks 25 years of municipal drinking water protection through a multi-barrier approach of regulations, training, testing and education that is unique to our province. This process begins by protecting drinking water directly at the source, whether that's a river, lake or groundwater. This focus on source water protection means Ontario now boasts some of the safest municipal drinking water in North America. But this robust system did not come out of nowhere. It was built on public inquiry recommendations following a serious drinking water contamination event in Walkerton, Ontario in May 2000, during which seven people died and several thousand were made ill. Since then, provincial ministries, municipalities, conservation authorities, volunteers and private landowners have worked hard every day to ensure a safe and reliable municipal drinking water source for current and future generations. It's much easier to prevent a contamination event from happening than it is to clean it up. The impact to people's lives, to the natural environment, the cost of cleanup are things that we should take into consideration when we think about the protecting aspect of drinking water versus the cleanup aspect. Before, I believe the public perceived there was protections and now we know there are protections and it is through a multi-barrier approach that we currently have with the legislation that we have with the Safe Drinking Water Act, the Clean Water Act and the entire suite from source to tap. There's no comparison. Uh, we have learned so much since, uh, you know, in 25 years and post, um, pre and post legislation. Um, the legislation provides uh, a greater management of risk and provides tools that we can use to continue to protect our source water. Um, the multi-barrier approach um, provides uh, multiple la layers of protection um, and this was not available 25 years ago to our, our uh, water supply. The multi-barrier approach combines multiple processes and procedures which must work together to minimize and eliminate contamination in drinking water. This approach includes source water protection, treatment, inspections, testing and distribution. If you look now 25 years later at the roles of municipal councils, within the regulations and those acts they have been strongly reinforced. So the mandate from the government had two parts. The first part was to look into what happened and report on what happened in Walkerton, why, and to make any recommendations emerging from what did happen there. The second mandate was to make recommendations to ensure the safety of drinking water in the province of Ontario. There was broad acceptance that the start of any multiple barrier approach for the safety of drinking water started with protecting the source water. And then when it came to the recommendations, we, we thought it was important that there be source water uh, protection committees and that there would be uh, representatives on a watershed basis, but there would be representatives on the community of the different interest groups who, in that particular watershed, had an interest. Obviously, with uh, drinking water, you want to start with the best possible water quality to begin with, and that, that helps reduce some of the potential problems. The biggest success um, is the approval and implementation of the source protection plans. If you look at source water protection, all of the uh, source protection committees around the province have been doing things that never would have been thought of 25 years ago. The science of the pro program and the, the rigor that was given to the foundation of the program, I think that that was a huge success that people can sort of rely on the policies because the science was, was very rigorous. But it became apparent to, to us early on that what was important is that in trying to protect drinking water sources, um, we should address it on a watershed by watershed basis, which hadn't always been the case. Conservation authorities were well suited to help with this process, 
as they already operated on a watershed basis and had technical expertise in regulatory and monitoring activities. We've helped with uh, developing the science and managing studies to develop the science. We've helped the source protection committees uh, develop source protection plans and we've, we've also helped uh, communicate with the public and consult with the public about the program. They do endless education and outreach. They are attending those farm events, you know, going to schools and teaching kids and kids teaching parents and getting out there and talking to different organizations. What I'm really uh, proud to be part of was the development of the provincial road signs, um, like the one behind me here. And those signs indicate areas, uh, vulnerable areas around municipal wells and intakes. I hope that more people, the general public in particular, become aware of what we're trying to do with source protection. Uh, initially, it was a challenge because there were no regulations, right? This was all new. Today, I think the younger generation or the generation of farmers out there um, do not find this regulation a burden at all, right? Uh, it is part of farming practices that they do, and, and it's just incorporated into their everyday work schedule. It was a very hardening experience to see people from different parts of Canada come together and to cooperate with a single unified goal. Uh, and working together with all of these people with a common objective is, is one of the most memorable things that I've ever been involved in. there will definitely be challenges going forward. You know, we have to, again, stay attuned to that and, and be able to adapt to make sure that we do address those concerns as they come. I think the general public needs to be vigilant about drinking water safety. It's not something we can take for granted. I think there's a widespread public concern about drinking water safety and people are very much aware of the need to protect uh, drinking water quality and quantity. I would say in the intervening uh, decades that awareness, that public awareness has uh, decreased somewhat and uh, I think that we need to remind ourselves what happened at Walkton and what we need to do to prevent it from other, uh, happening in other communities across Ontario. We need to celebrate our successes, not forget the past that brought us here and appreciate the fact that we need clean, drinkable water for life itself. We need to respect that and protect it.